Alright, hello everybody, welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, how is everybody doing? According to my viewer count, I don't have any everybody out there to be talking to, but that doesn't matter. Because I believe in you, I believe you are there. Uh, today we have done something a little different. I've gotten the plane partially set up, I've entered my flight plan into the McDo. Um, <clears throat> you will be able to see the routing for our first flight on the, uh, exclamation point route command. And I will try and remember to update that after, um, after we've flown our first sector. Uh, as some of you may or may not be aware, we now have a Patreon. So if you hit exclamation point Patreon, you can check that out and take a look. Uh, obviously, they don't really expect a lot to be going on there. Um, but I will be making some information available exclusively to Patreon. Uh, not a lot, nothing big or important. Just some things to make it feel like they're getting some value out of the money that they're putting into the stream. My, my tiers are very, very low. One, three, and five dollars. I'm not expecting anything big, but everything that comes into the Patreon goes back into the stream. Speaking of back into the stream, let's get rolling because I want, if possible, to finish these sectors very, very quickly so we can maybe fly a unicorn fourth se or third sector. That would be fun. And I would love to do it for you guys, so let's get started. I've already got the batteries 1 and 2 on, recorder ground control is on, external power is on, fuel pumps are all off, fuel is loaded, APU fire test, which sounds good. Let's go ahead and APU master switch on. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. APU start. I've already set up my cockpit lights, McDo's, and ECAMs. Uh, flap lever is matched to the ECAM. Speed brake is retracted. Pedo tube and window heat is on auto. Uh, APU bleed comes on as soon as the APU is done coming on. Air conditioning panel has no white. Cross bleed is set to auto. Air conditioner temperature is as required since we're not going to fuck with it. Generator 1 and 2 fault lights are on. External power can turn off as soon as our APU finishes coming up. Uh, so as soon as that happens, we AP bleed on and external power off. Electrical panel, all other lights off. Ventilation panel, all lights off. That is the preliminary pre-flight procedures. Complete minus two items. Pre-flight procedures, we already have our adheres up here aligned on nav. <clears throat> Strobe lights are set to auto. That's our AP coming on, so external power is off. AP bleed is on. Uh, strobe light is on auto. Wing lights is on. Nav and logo system one or two. Seat belts can now come on since we have all of our passengers. That would be you guys. Loaded up in the back of the plane. Uh, and since we've done that, let's go ahead and lock our door. Cockpit is locked. We are good to go. Okay, pack flow is already set to low. Fuel pumps can all come on now. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have fuel pumps all on, engine 1 and 2 fire test, positive, and positive, perfect, perfect. Radios 1, 2, and 3 are all on, and ICTU is configured. We can now proceed directly to push back and start. Altimeter can be set, or altitude, pardon me, no, altimeter set. I'm sorry, I'm, I was correct the first time. Shouldn't have questioned it. I still have not been able to get the A320 to work. Uh, it just freezes this the stream. McDonald's I don't know why. I N T L information whiskey. Two two zero nine Zulu. Visibility one five. Temperature two one. Dew point two zero. Wind seven zero at six. Altimeter two nine seven eight. Advise you have information whiskey. Two nine End of information seven whiskey. eight. This IS McDonald Cartier. We're gonna have a decent crosswind at takeoff. Okay, fair enough. 
All right, flight directors both on FCU speed managed dash, heading managed dash, altitude set to ATC cleared since we don't have any restrictions. We're going to just open climb up to three, four thousand. Um, anti skid nose wheel steering is on, pitching panel all normal, transponder set squawk, we're not going to worry about it because we're not flying online. Beacon on, and then we can call for pushback. All right, so we need to. I'll pull up my map here, and I'm going to switch this over to chat mode so I can see you guys. Because I actually got all my accoutrement working today, so I am very, very happy for that. Let's look at our live map so I can see exactly where I am. And see my taxi assignment. Alright, taxi is going to be straight back on the... And then down. We're gonna go Echo. Wait. Echo Charlie Charlie Alpha. Straight to the end of runway one. Perfect. Alright, so that means that we need tail left. Alright, better push back. Route of cockpit, please show me where you want to go. Tail left. Right today. Ground to cockpit, tow is driving up. All right, so let's get this bird in the air, shall we, folks? Uh, let's get it in the air so that we can then get it on the ground, get it in the air again, get it on the ground again, and then get it in the air again if at all possible. I would love to fly a third sector today. Uh, I flew probably four or five sectors this weekend uh, on Saturday, and then another one on Sunday. I think no, it was Friday and Saturday. I flew extra sectors. Um, I think I did Corpus Christi to Dallas Fort Worth to Tulsa to to uh, St. Louis, and then I also did uh, Madrid to Port. I can't remember where I went, and I don't want to switch off my live map. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Sounds good. I don't want to switch off my live map. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and switch. Uh, LP, what is that? So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Grand Canaria. Release parking brake, yes sir, you got it. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Alright, let's go ahead and... Uh, go ahead and start engines. Ignition, engine 2. <clears throat> We're going to hit this at 25% and 2 rotation. introduce fuel flow now and that's a positive start engine two engine one coming on That's a positive start, engine one. Back to engine mode normal. If you bleed off, once hit 20% N1. 
Okay, brace myself. Operation Embraced. Embraced. Set parking brace, brace, brace. Uh, set parking brake. <clears throat> Disconnecting tow. Stand by. And off. Ground spoilers armed. Flap set for takeoff. Pitch trim is zero today. Let's make sure. 0, 0 up. Hitting that subscribe button. Thank you so much, Bard. I appreciate it so much. Okay, I don't know how you got her to do that. And uh, leave that, 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 that space in the middle, but that was brilliant and I loved it. <clears throat> okay, if you master off. Button, 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 button. So is disconnected. Button, and button, just in case you thought it was done. Hand signal will be on the left. We'll see on next the time. left? Have okay. I've been mean, looking for this guy over on my left hand side. <clears throat> 17 months. Wow, look at that. That is a hell of a streak, my dude. I appreciate that so much. And I am, I, I'm just, I'm super excited also to get, <clears throat> to get my hands on Microsoft Flight 2020. Let me tell you, Bard has, has offered to be very, very um, selfless and generous and help me get the money that I need uh, <clears throat> so that I can get the premium edition of uh, Microsoft Flight 2020. And that is absolutely amazing. He did not have to do that, but I appreciate it a whole, whole lot. Okay, let's get our clock running. Also start our chrono for our taxi time. Light control check, full left, full right, full up, full down. FMA should be on nav and climb. Let's go ahead and release our parking brake. All right, auto brake set max. And turn our terrain on. Check our cabin. Take off config check. We're gonna ignore these stupid things on the ground that like to mess with me. And then we're going to make a right turn here onto Okay, this looks very different on my screen, but that's fine as I can take directly onto alpha here. And let's get rolling. Our runway is right over there. That's where we're going to be taking off. <clears throat> All right, ECAM no blue or takeoff checklist transponder to TARA. Ah! Ah! Holy shit! <laughs> Thank you much for, so much for uh, scaring the shit out of me there, Bard. Um, at least it wasn't during takeoff. That could have gone badly. Especially since we are in the middle of a stormy weather here. Uh, although I haven't heard any thunder yet, so that's probably a good thing. Engine mode's probably going to be on ignition as we take, or continuous as we take off. Because, um, because the rain could possibly extinguish the engines at those speeds. All right, we are coming up on the runway. Let's go ahead and turn our runway turnoffs on and our landing lights are on. Turn our nose light to take off. Transponders on TARA. Let's go ahead and switch to our takeoff checklist. Slow down to make this turn. I apologize if I do a lot of clearing my throat today. Um, I've already done quite a bit of talking today, mostly with my boss. Go ahead and come this way to get just about as much runway room as we can get. 
Don't want to run any risks with this rain. Park brake on. Go ahead and stop our taxi timer. Start chrono. Set it to 50% and one. Stabilize, release, flex set. All right. And airspeed's alive. timing. Okay, V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Let's get our nose up into this climb. And right turn. Go ahead and when we turn offs off, nose lights off. All right, we are making a right turn so we don't have the restrictions. All right, speed checked. Flaps one. Let's disarm our speed brakes. Uh, Rock spoilers disarmed as wheel light off, runway turn offs off, AP1 can come on when we're ready. Speed checked, flaps full, flaps clean, I'm sorry. So flaps are retracted. get the autopilot going. We are through 6,000 feet. All right, autopilot one on. Throttle to the climb detent. Flaps retracted. Engine mode normal, which I mistakenly already had on. Uh, engine anti-ice on it under 10 degrees, which we're fine. Landing lights to be off at 10,000. We are not quite there yet. <clears throat> All right, looks like we are on our way. A little bit of an S curve going on in our on our departure. I'm not sure why, but uh, we are on our way to Toronto. I don't know why it is, but the Tolis just doesn't seem to be able to guide me through a proper uh, turn, get back on course. So. This is what we get. Okay, we are through 10,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our landing lights. Let's turn off our wipers. Turn off our seat belts. Make sure everything's locked up. Transponder is on and reporting. Weather radar is on. Let's go ahead and tilt it up a little bit. Turn off our train. Yes, no, yes. Uh, let's see here. System one, auto. 
guess auto, multi scan auto. Should be able to have this turn to weather and turbulence. See what happens. Let's rotate this a little bit. All right, there's Takir, which ironically means we are about to be on our uh, approach. Well, our approach transition anyway. But yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, also, we have a Patreon now. Um, I worked very hard on that this morning when I was supposed to be working on other things. But guess what? This, uh, this little job is starting to become more uh, reliable than my day job. So, um, I'm starting to throw more resources into doing this and doing it right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a lifesaver in my mouth. So, you guys get to hear a little bit of crinkling there for a second. While I get this little tablet out of its plastic package. At least I, I will if I can. It's being a little bit of a pain. There we go. Sorry about that crinkling. All right. So we are well on our way. We are through 18,000 feet almost, which at which point we will switch to standard barometric pressure. And now we are bang on our trajectory. We have a little bit of a crosswind and a hell of a headwind. Through 18,000 feet, standard barrow set. Ah, I hate it when it does that. All right. We can go ahead and turn off our wing lights. Seat belts are off. All right, everything up here looks good. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get a flyby, shall we? See this thing just screaming through the air. Crab angle is crazy though. We're almost flying sideways. Probably what? Five, ten degrees deflection? And now we're turning further into the wind, I think. Yep, yep, we're about to fly straight headwind. 42 knot headwind. Oh, that's going to be fun. If I remember right, this is a hell of a leg. Yeah, there we are. We'll hit our top of climb just before, just after Libum, and then we'll have to start descending again after Ixap. Or at Ixap. Hopefully, we should be able to make this landing no problems. Probably going to want to exit our runway to the left on Tango or Bravo 3 if we can make it. I prefer Bravo 3. Kind of start briefing myself, getting ready for it. And in case anybody is curious, I am looking at my charts here, and I am on page 39 of 158. So um, we'll, we're we're already just past to here. So we're already on this at the top right side, right under where it says Ragged 5. Um, and according to this, I should be flying 239, which is bang on where I'm flying. Um, once we hit Libum, we will turn heading 250. And we will maintain... 250 to Udnox, 249 from Udnox to Ragged, Ragged, and 248 to Lorat, and at Lorat we need to be down to 170 or one, or as low as 150. 
so we'll need to drop about seventeen thousand feet, and it's going to have us start descending a big sap. So we have what's that? Nineteen fifty-six. We have 78 nautical miles to descend 17,000 feet. So we'll probably be at engine idle at that point. We're taking what we'll for. Okay, we're actually going to be on page 40. My apologies, folks. We're going to be on page 40. So that's where we turn from Miro to uh, Metux, Palm Tip, Cassett, and Mepo. Okay, so we're going from Ragged to Intro. We got a little bit of a rock going on. Got a little bit of wind, didn't we? Probably a weather update. Yeah, there is a weather update. Explain. Explain. Listen, Laminar, I know you're a small group, okay? But look. You can't keep going from point to point and just immediately updating all the fields, okay? Choose a, choose a period of time, probably a short period of time, and your weather should go from point to point over that period of time, just gliding all of the values, right? It could be a short period of time. It could be, it could be well, ideally, it would be relative to the amount of time between weather updates. So if you've got 15 minutes between weather updates, maybe it, it, it happens in a minute and a half. If you have one minute between updates, then it should happen every 10, it should glide over 10 seconds, right? That way it benefits those of us who can handle having our weather updated more often. Uh, we're about to hit top climb, but yeah, that way we don't have this thing where we get rocked by, suddenly we go from an 88 knot straight headwind to like a 75 knot quartering headwind and it's just like that. You know what I mean? Give us a little time to react because it's not showing up on the weather radar because it's not in the weather. Right? So the weather radar can't tell us that this is coming like a real world pilot would get. X-Plane just gets the weather update and then you shoves it into my face and my plane gets tossed. I mean, Laminar, come on. We are T-minus two weeks to the release of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. You are not the only name in the game anymore. Okay, speed arm, uh, pardon me, speed captured, all crews. And it looks like we are bang on for that. Cross checked, we're good. Alright, so we are in our cruise phase. So, how have you guys been doing? I've been having a pretty good time. 
uh, enter destination data. We are already at the point where it wants destination data. Okay. Well, let's do that. Flip to 122.3 to pick up ATIS. This is Lester B. Pearson, INTL Information Whiskey. 2235 Zulu. Visibility 1. Temperature 20. 2.17. Line 320 at 19. Altimeter 2981. Advise you have information whiskey. End of information whiskey. Okay, that's. This is Lester B. Pearson, INTL Information Whiskey. 2235 Zulu. Visibility 1. Temperature 20. 2.17. Line 320 at 19. I'd be flying exactly the wrong way. Yeah, that's that's not ideal. Let's switch this. Switch this to an arrival for three 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 zero. Three right. Perfect. We, I'm sorry for freaking out there, but uh, I haven't ever actually changed my landing that while in flight before. I wasn't sure everything was going to work, but that wind was a straight tailwind of, um, let's see, what is that? Tailwind of 19 knots. That's out of, of uh, what, what we're allowed to fly and land. So, uh, Simbri flied to me, that's okay, because uh, I'm not reliant on Simbrief, I am the flyer of this airplane. Alright, so we're going to look at Ragged 2 for 5, so 6, So let's go to 12,000. 
as soon as we hit, actually, I'm going to go ahead and descend. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. We are on descent into Toronto, where it is a absolutely lovely 20 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure if it's raining, but uh, it's a little windy, so be prepared. There will there may be a little bit of turbulence on landing. Other than that, we should have a perfectly normal descent. Thank you guys so much for flying Air Rack Attack Airlines. Thank you for flying the salty skies. And we will see you on the ground. Have you on the ground here probably in about, oh, let's say 20, 30 minutes. But not. Alright, so we're on to set, set procedures, landing elevation, auto. Real quick, let's see if I can't grab descent wind. I cannot. Um, landing elevation auto. Big do arrivals and performance approach is completed. Top of descent winds can't do. FCU altitude set and push already done. Speed rate cap as required. Not required. We are well below our descent profile. Altimeter set Q and H, which I will do when we cross 18,000 feet. Landing lights on at 10,000 NT, ND data to constraints. We can go ahead and get a jump on that. We'll turn on airports on the co-pilot screen. Or pilot monitoring. Hmm. All right, so... If you got, by the way, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, feel free to shout them out. Uh, I am happy to answer any and all questions. If I can. You know, understand that, yeah, I am a novice pilot. I don't exactly know what I'm doing. Um, we'll need to cross Nubav at 8,000 feet exactly. Perfect, okay. Looks like our descent profile is descending to us. Fantastic. Perfect, perfect. Descending at 1,000 feet per minute. One of these days, I will properly remember the correct time to set my uh, my block time here. Instead of starting it at the same time I start my taxi timer. It should be in my checklist, and I really should add that anytime now. Okay, so we're going to... Ch we've, we've changed which way we're landing, so we need to adjust our... So we're gonna we're gonna try and exit right. We're gonna be aiming for Bravo two. Bravo two, Bravo four, if absolutely necessary. But I want to be off the runway by Bravo four. I do not want to have to go all the way. To if I have to take Juliet. I have gone too far, and I have failed as a pilot. And then once we are on the ground, I'm going to take a short break to set up the second sector. And if you guys could do me a favor and help me remember to put the new route into the bot, I would appreciate that so, so much. We'll probably take about a 5 to 10 minute break. It just takes me that long at least to set up the flight and make sure that my weather is up to date.
<clears throat> Pardon me? Alright, so where are we? Still quite a ways out. We're not even properly on to the arrival. We're just on the transition right now. We are flying bang on this this route. Oh, just looking at this map is beautiful. Mm. So, let's brief ourselves a little bit more. We are approaching Ragged. Right, so we should be on 249. We're on 251. I'm not sure why that's not quite right. Maybe because of the crosswind? No, we got almost a straight on headwind. All right, though. That's that's totally okay. Once we cross cross Vidro, I'm going to go ahead and lower our altitude to eight thousand. Need to find the approach plate. There's a lot of there's a lot of So, uh, altitude set inches at transition level 180, RNAV, I, or GNSS required, safe altitude within 100 nautical miles, 4900, jet aircraft only, transition for non-GSSS equipped, after IXI DME must be transitioned. Not referred to. Continuous operation combination of aircraft operating technique and arrival procedure design with appropriate ATC clearances to enable arriving aircraft to fly continue intercept descent path with a minimum of flight leveling uh, of level flight segments on the star until intercepting the final landing guidance to the runway ILS. Ideally the aircraft will fly to the continuous descent in the lowest power and drag configuration as is safely possible until intercepting the final landing guidance, at which point able approach criteria becomes the overriding target. Okay, cool, cool. 
precision. All speed restrictions are to be flown as accurately as possible. If unable, conform to speed restrictions in Form 8 and state but speed sent on star pilots will be ex expected to manage continuous events using an F system. When AT assigns a lower altitude, pilot shall descend on the star profile to the assigned altitude. Charted altitude restrictions above the assigned altitude remain mandatory. Downwind descent guidance. Uh, Airport elevations in six nine feet. We're below eighteen thousand. Those are performance here two nine or eight and one. Right, three, three left, or three, three right. Okay, so we're gonna go to Agbeck. And there's Agbeck. We're gonna intercept up. Read on at 3,000. Gonna be at exactly 3,000 at read on. Okay, so this is page 140. 40. 42 and 140. Perfect, okay. I apologize, I'm getting my charts in order so that I understand where I'm going and what I'm doing. All the way to... Koku, and then they're going to give me a direct read on. As long as we are under 14,000 by the time we get to this vidro, we're fine. When we are under 14,000, we're good. So we're at about 13,000 crossing Vidno, which is perfect. That's bang on right in the middle of our uh, clearance. We need to be 8,000 by by new new bath, which is not on here. I'm not sure why. Need to level off at Nubav at 8,000.
And then I don't see any more restrictions down to the 3,000 that I need to be at. At Redog. Charts here. Make sure I'm flying the correct person. Okay, we're turning it Elvet. We need to be at 8,000 by Nubab. What do you, what do you have here? Needs to be eight. Dog needs to be at three thousand. There we go. That looks good. Right, we're on our way to Nubav. We are below our descent for it, which is perfect. This means we'll remain at throttle idle. Maybe catch up a little bit. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We are under 10,000 feet. Let's turn on those landing lights and these passenger seatbelt lights. We can turn on our landing system. It won't lock for a while, but go ahead and get it armed. to hold 8,000 until we cross Nubav. We should be just fine at. Alright. And then once we've crossed Nubav, can take us down to 3,000. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to be set up for Redog. It's going to slow us down to 220 knots. There's our uh, airport. Right up on that thing, aren't we? We're gonna make a left turn here. Back to idle. That's good. We're gonna just slowly bleed off speed as we hold our altitude and as we bank. Okay, FCU speed, dashed, speed brake as required, not required, but we're going to go ahead and arm it. Uh, 
uh, once we want. All right, so we can turn start deploying flaps anytime we want, but uh, I want to keep the CVO going or CDO going, and keep my brag low until we get a little bit lower, a little bit further. We're about to hit 210 knot speed restriction, which we'll still be fine at. procedures. Should be fine. That looks like the weather's not too bad. vertical speed. Ooh, here we are. There's the weather. Go ahead and put in flaps one. Be checked. Here you go, a little bit of turbulence, folks. Everything's fine, nothing to worry about. So I'm going to estimate our chances of crashing at about 15%. That's pretty high, but you know what? I'm an armchair pilot. I consider that okay. All right, we are under 200 knots. We keep if we keep dropping airspeed like this, I'm definitely gonna deploy. Nope, nope. Okay, we're coming back up. We're good. Alright. FCU approach. Go ahead and get armed. looking for the alt altitude glide slope and uh, localizer are armed. We are in an open descent to 3,000 feet. Go ahead and arm the second autopilot. Flaps two, speed checked, flaps two. down. Speed check, flaps three. Speed check, flaps full. Get runway turnoffs and nose wheel lights on. Front spoilers already armed. Auto brake to low. Ecam all green. Auto throttle is still engaged. Nose wheel lights, taxi, runway turnoffs are on, landing lights are on, cabin calls, ECAM, no blue. Alright, well, let's see if we can't land this thing.
Watch that speed there, Padre. Looks like we have a seven degree down angle. Or at least we should. Once we start descending again. All right, we are on the localizer. Waiting for the glide slope to come in. Mandatory re uh, reporting is at Queensway YZY. Zulu Yankee Zulu. I said YZY, didn't I? ZYZ. Zulu Yankee Zulu. off. See if we can't catch the uh, runway visuals. This is going to be a real sketchy landing, guys. I have myself some decent concerns. Alright, we're coming in on the glide slope, and that'll bring us down hopefully below some of these clouds. Descending, glide slope capture. We can't catch sight. I know I can see some of the ground. Hopefully I'll be able to see the lights soon. Oh, this wind! It's like quartering, 14 knots, mostly headwind. We should be okay. This is going to be the sketchiest landing I've done in a while. Oh, X plane, I can't see. There's our pappy. All right. We have visual confirmation of the runway. swung in from the right. It's going to be coming probably about uh, 700, yeah, right about 700 feet per minute. All right, 
at 1,000 feet. We'll go ahead and take control of the airplane. All right, we need to exit Bravo Four. for Alpha. It looks like we're not connecting to Alpha. We'll go Bravo. <laughs> that's that's fine. APU master on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That started. Right onto Alpha. And then head towards the turn. All right, let's look at our rollout checklist. Landing lights retracted, ground spoilers disarmed, engine mode normal, flaps retracted. Be all the way retracted, yep. Uh, APU master on, if you start on, terrain on, and off. Brake fan on, if 300 or higher. What's our wheels look like? 230. Be just fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Toronto Pearson International Airport. Weather is a decent 20 degrees. The uh, weather is obviously a little bit rainy, but not terribly stormy. Thank you guys for flying the salty skies with Air Rack Attack. And uh, we all hope to see you next time. Now, when I say next time, I mean here in a few minutes, because we are going to continue on to London. And when I say London, I do not mean Great Britain. I mean London, Ontario. Go ahead and get turned in here. Just stop at gate C30.
slow it down just a little bit. Look over here and now we're we're Normally we would have a ground crew out here telling us how far to go. Go ahead and take a look outside the aircraft. Well, we are a little far forward. Um, but they normally would not move this over until after this point anyway. We are bang on that center line. Oh, that is beautiful. That is exactly what you want to see. All right, so let's get the parking checklist, parking brake pressure check green. Uh, parking brake on, anti-ice off, APU bleed on. Um, engine 1 and 2 master set off. Runway turn off, lights are off, taxi lights off. Uh, nose wheel light off. Beacon off. Seat belts off. Elapsed time stop. You're about one hour of block time. Transponder to standby. Little pumps off. <clears throat> All right. So we're not going to secure the aircraft because we are going to go again. But while I'm setting that up, uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to mute. You, you know, I'm going to mute myself and uh, work on setting this up. It'll probably take me about five, ten minutes. I'm going to switch you guys over to a break screen where you're not going to be able to see what's going on on stream, um, mostly because there's going to be nothing important going on, and it lets people know that we will be back. I'm going to go ahead also and set a quick timer here. Hopefully, I will be in under this. All right, so I'm going to get working on that. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I will be back in about 10 minutes with a new flight plan heading to London, Ontario.
And ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Thank you guys so much for waiting. Uh, so we are getting ready to start our second leg from uh, from Toronto to London, Ontario. This is an extremely short flight. They usually only fly this in De Havilland's. Um, so we're a bit big for it, but we'll be fine. We can land on the runway. We'll be all right. Um, okay, so we've already done most of this because this is a second sector flight. We're in turnaround state. So battery one and two is already on. Recorder ground control is on. Uh, external power is on. Fuel pumps are all off. Fuel is already loaded. AP fire tests. All right, and let's go ahead and get that thing started. I don't know whether or not it's procedure. You still do the fire test after the first sector of the day, but I'm doing it anyway because I'm me and I'm an armchair pilot and I can do whatever the hell I want. It is my stream. All right, APU fire test, master switch on, start is already selected, cockpit lights and mcdoos are already set up, flap lever is matching the ecam. Speed brakes are retracted. Probe window heat is on auto. APU bleed is coming on when these are done. I still had it on. My bad. Uh, air conditioner panel, no white. Uh, generator one and two fault lights on. All other lights off. Good. Uh, external power can come off as soon as my APU is successfully started. Ventilation is all lights off all that remains is to turn on apu bleed and external power when the apu is done starting up pre-flight procedures adiers are already on strobe light is already on uh wing lights are on nav and logo are on system one seat belts are off let's turn those on Our apu is available let's go ahead and turn off ground power and turn on ap bleed Hey, how you doing, Nightland? It's been a while since I've seen you. I apologize for not dropping by your stream a little more. I've been busy lately. Trying to get a little more, squeeze just a little more professionalism into my stream. Um, so I've been doing a lot of work around that and uh, basically filling, filling my life with a bunch of hectic shit that I don't really need, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, so seat belts are on, no smoking lights are on, are on auto, emergency lights are armed, landing elevation is on auto, pack flow is as required, we are at 112 passengers today, so we are on low pack flow. Uh, fuel pumps, let's go ahead and turn these all on, and then we will need to fire test our engines. Okay, life has been crazy, my schedule has been chaotic, I've noticed that, I have seen you coming on. And I appreciate you dropping by. I, I do see you go go live from time to time. It's usually when I'm already watching something or when I'm in the middle of a dungeon in Final Fantasy XIV. So engine of one and two fire test is on. Radios one, two, and three are on. All right, let's go ahead and do the MCDU config. You guys missed that the first time around. Uh, this time our GPS data should be good. We're going from CYYZ to CYXU. Flight number is JZA. Okay, eighty-six fifty-three. Cost index five. And our cruise flight level is probably going to be real, real low. One four zero. Climb wind. Initialization B, plugins, chat. Behind oh, him, just as guilty. We're all just guilty. Like, let's be honest, guys. If if you don't stream, then maybe you don't know. But streaming takes a lot more than it looks. Like, don't let's not. Hmm. Let's let's not. Actually, we're not too. In it be are we work right uh flight plan um streaming takes a lot of setup it takes a lot of work and art too and you're you're an art streamer so you've got a double bad right so people respect your artists respect your streamers we we do a lot of work that you guys don't get to see 
Okay, so we are taking off runway 33 right. This is the same one we landed on. Flight planning, we're taking Emba 5. Or we'll take Pemba 3. Uh, transition to... Is there a Durlo transition? Yeah, there it is. The Durlo transition. And serve. And then we're going to take... Uh, no star, but we're going to be arriving... ILS 33. Arnav? Or I'll take Arnav. Arnav 33 Zoop. No star. We're going to Kerpo transition. No, via Kerpo. No transition. Go ahead and remove this manual. No need for it. low straight to Kerpo. No need for this discount either. All right, looks good. Yeah, give me a bit of setup. It is a lot of setup with art and with gaming shit. I find my software and tech exactly, and getting people on board, doing uh, do, doing your your own assets. Um, you know, getting yourself positioned in 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 social media and together with other streamers, uh, with your community and trying to manage that community. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of things that we do behind the scenes that nobody gets to see. And uh, I wish that people knew more about it, but you really can't learn about it without doing it. We're 52.3 with a center of gravity of 29.6. Block fuel is going to be 3.9 tons. All right, with that's 1.7 hours of extra time. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Let's go to performance. We're going to use a flaps 2 takeoff. 1151. We rotate 151, which means we can use the whole goddamn runway. Up until the moment that we take off, we can still stop. Uh, V2 is going to be 154. That's the uh, speed to which we must accelerate after taking off. <clears throat> We're going to be 2 slash down 0 0.1, not 0 0.01. Flex temp is going to be 65 degrees. Oof, building a community is slow and hard. Exactly. And I still have a bunch of small things I need to do to make, uh, do for my own page, like custom bit images. Right? Right? Custom badges. Yeah, I, I actually did my own badges. Um, I don't think you can see anybody talking that has them. But uh, I do have uh, badges. And I think that they're pretty good. But um, they're, they're basically just a logo, but in different colors which made things much easier on me than trying to come up with a dozen different designs. All right, so that's performance, progress. We're gonna go to CYXU. Only 77 miles away. All right, so we have gotten that all set up. McDo is set up, now we can our pushback. Go ahead and go to live map so I can see my taxiways. All right, so we need to take tail back left to get on alpha. Then we can go down to Bravo, Delta, Bravo, Delta. So alpha, Bravo, Bravo, Delta. I'm not sure what the hell this is. Alpha Kilo. Actually, I'll go Alpha Juliet down to Bravo. Bravo crosses down, remains Bravo. And then I'll take Delta. 
Alpha Juliet, Bravo, Delta. Runway 3. Perfect. All right, so let's get better pushback. Start Round pushback. Round cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. Tail left. Perfect. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. Good. I'm also waiting for the extra emoji slots to hit everyone. <sighs> I'm still waiting for one extra emoji slot, but that's just about building a community, getting people talking. Um, for those of you who don't know the back end of Twitch, right? Affiliates have to jump through hoops in order to get extra emote slots. I would love to get more emote slots. Doing so requires getting, I think, like seven or eight people talking at once. Um, which I seem to max out at about five right now. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we can increase that. But that's just going to take time. You know, it, it just takes us being able to get... To get more okay, people in. all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. I didn't know that. I thought it was just on subscribers. It might, it might be subscribers actually. I think, I think you're right. It's the, uh, um, fuck. What's the the thing? I think it's more, more badges, more loyalty badges that you get with talking. I'm sorry, you're right. It's not like they communicate these things. They, yeah, you have to go. Basically, it's the weirdest thing. You have to go looking in achievements. So you got stream achievements. Uh, for those of you who've never streamed on Twitch, we have achievements, and it's and it's just a page in our Twitch uh, dashboard that we can look at that tells us basically our path to affiliate and our path to, to uh, partner, that sort of thing. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. All right, release parking brake. Thank you very much. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. All right. Engine 2 ignition mode, engine 2 starting. But yeah, they, they don't tell us anything. There's 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 no until you're a in, until you're a, a partner, and I don't think even then. Honestly, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it out loud right now. Unless you have an incredibly generous community that likes to sub for higher tier stuff. There is really no benefit to being a partner. I'm just going to say it. I know, unpopular opinion, guys, but it's, it's the truth. There is, there is no real benefit to being a partner. They, they don't give the, pro, the personal attention that they used to. Um, you don't get more money except for on Tier 2 and Tier 3. Um, tier 2 and Tier 3 uh, subscriptions. So you still get the same 50% of tier 1s that everyone else gets. You still get the same uh, cut of ads. You still get the same cut of bits. Uh, they keep... The, at best, they test new things with partners and then give them to affiliates for free. Um, there's not really anything that they give to partners anymore that's worth anything. And it's really sad. And it doesn't give affiliates anything that we need to aim for right because it doesn't matter you do get more emote slots yes um but then it is still dependent on your um on your viewer script uh, on your subscribership it is still dependent on that you still get more for having more subscribers so it's not like just being a partner will get you that all right, altimeter set, which it's still it's it should still be good. Let's. I've actually screwed up here and done a few things out of order. This is Lester B. Pearson, INTL Information X-ray. The director, two, three, on. Four, two, Zulu. Visibility one zero. Temperature one nine. Dew point one eight. Line four zero eight. Complete. That altimeter two nine eight. Advise you have information X-ray. End of information X-ray. This is Lester B. Pearson, INTL Information X-ray. 2343 Zulu. Visibility 10. Temperature 19. Dew point 18. Line 40 and 8. Altimeter 298. Advise you have information X-ray. 
and of information x-ray. This is Lester B. Pearson INTL information x-ray. 2343. Okay, got that. He told me where he's going to be yet. <laughs> if you have good um, emotes, there are people who will sub and keep sub just to keep those emotes. That is true. That is absolutely true. Need to work on bards. Maybe I'll start that tonight. Detected, That'd probably be a good idea. Has been Hand signal will be on the left. On we'll the see left. Next time. Perfect. Have a safe flight. I don't like whoring out for subs. Like, I'm poor and I get that other people are poor too. L right. And that's why... Um, like I'm more interested in bits. You can you can just go and click the bit button in the in the chat bar and click get bits and watch ads and you can watch ads for bits. Sometimes it's a little spotty, but um, you know, I'd rather see a couple of bits coming in. I'd, I'd rather see t 10 bits every stream than a sub. You know what I mean? 10 20 bits and and it would add up to a sub every month. And that way you don't have to pay a thing. All right, ground spoilers armed, flaps set for takeoff, pitch trim set for takeoff, which is going to be down 0 0.1. Down 0 0.1. All right, let me make sure. Yeah, down 0 0.1. All right, AP Master is off. Taxi. And I, once again, did not set this at the right time. All right. Taxi lights on. Chronos. Uh, taxi timer start. Flight control check. Full left. Full right. Full up. Full down. All right. Let's get her rolling. We're going to set our auto brake to max. To our cabin calls. Takeoff config check. All right, so we are going to yeah. I don't like mine. I want to edit it, which is fine. Actually, um, <clears throat> actually, they just rolled out a system where you can get your your emotes are basically approved automatically unless there's a report. So uh, you can absolutely edit your emotes and you won't have to wait for them to reapprove them again. Okay, now I'm going to turn left. You're on to Bravo. Nice and easy to do, but I have no idea what I want. Yeah, it took it took me a while to figure out what I wanted, and really, what I wound up doing is just asking my community what they wanted, and I wound up getting that. And I feel like that's probably a good thing to do for me because I think it's kept me a couple of subscriptions that I would not have kept otherwise. How did I go with pom poms? Okay, so. <laughs> It actually started in another stream, which is where I got a lot of my viewership in the beginning. Um, is that I was a staff member for an art stream, and we just started talking about one of, one of my subscribers that started out on the other channel. She has a corgi, and we talked about her corgi because I love dogs. I love all dogs, and her and, and corgis are no exception. And um, her corgis, and she had actual pom-poms, and her corgis tore up her pom-poms. We, we talked about the pom-poms because we would uh, talk about cheering for people that won, right? Because there was giveaways for art. And, you know, cheering pom-poms. So we were talking about it a lot, and then she said, you know what? If you had pom-pom emotes, I would sub immediately. So I started asking people, like, if that was the case, if, if I had pom-pom emotes... Would you subscribe to the channel? And people were like, yeah, I would love to have those emotes. So I went with the pom-poms because, you know, my community, that's, that's, the, the, the emotes are for them and they're not for me, you know? I mean, I love having them, but, um, 
and slow the hell down. Need to right turn here. Yeah, um, and it just wound up becoming a part of the stream. Just it was a lot of how the genesis of the stream itself happened. We are taking runway three three right. All right, I'm gonna turn off these wipers. Turn on runway turn offs, landing lights. Get our reporting mode on. Alright, taxi lights on are going to turn to takeoff. Transponder on, runway turn off, landing lights, nose wheels take off, take off and climb. Alright, chrono start. Throttle to 50%. Stabilize, release, flex set. Forward pressure. Airspeed is alive. Start releasing that pressure as the rudder starts becoming more useful. You want rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Lever to the climb to tents. Takeoff is a very touchy time. Flaps one. Flap zero. thousand feet I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the autopilot so I can turn off my runway turn offs my nose lights disarm my speed brakes um, all right and that's all we got until 10,000 feet which we're stuck at 3,000 for the moment no we're not skipped a step Flight level 140, yes. Alright. Wanna do a dragon? Ooh, that's gonna be Yeah, it's so small. That's the that's the rough. I mean maybe you could do like one of the extendable things. You're setting up for mine. Alright, well if you're live when I um, go offline. 
then I will send you uh, a raid. But yeah, um, maybe you could do one of those like two or three part dragons if you've got enough emote slots. I don't know how many emote slots you're about to have. But uh, that would be kind of cool is, is to kind of spread it out into two or three emotes. Like, are we talking about a European style dragon or more of a um, Chinese style? Sweet, I only have one emoji slot. Yeah, one for two, 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 one to two, two, three. How many are you about to get? I thought you said you were waiting for your emoji stipend, so to speak. We're going to Eastern style. Okay. Oh, cool. We're not even going to go through transition altitude today. At least not on this sector. Still breathing, but I have heard rumors that five free slots were coming for everyone. That would be fucking fantastic. I just have to figure out what the hell I'd want at that point. Oh man, that would be fantastic. All right, we're through ten thousand feet. Let's turn off these landing lights. Turn off the uh, passenger seatbelt lights because we are above these clouds, if just barely. Or still locked. That's good. It would. I hope it's true. I hope it's true too. And to be honest, it probably is. It probably is because Twitch does not keep anything for its uh, partners anymore. It hasn't in a very, very long time. I'm surprised this thing is not already screaming at me for landing data. I wonder why. Oh, so, I think, this, this is what I think. I think that Twitch knows that people who have small communities are going to bitch less than people who have huge communities. So, they're lower maintenance, right? And having 100,000 streams with two viewers means less risk than one stream with 10,000 viewers. Right? So I, I think that it's a cost-benefit analysis, right? They don't have to be as good to small streamers as they do with big streamers. And they know it. Because they've got us by the balls. And we just kind of have to take it because they're, they're the only ones that will monetize us as, as small as they do. Uh, I actually looked into it on Mixer before Mixer, you know, put tits up. And I could not have gotten monetized on Mixer at all. Little balls emoji. Just be careful. Make sure that it's it's easily misconstrued as something else because you don't want to get reported. I mean, end of the day, somebody's going to be butt hurt about something sometime, and they're going to blame you, and they're going to go after you for it. I mean, look, hey, if you have balls emojis, okay, I might just have to switch my free Twitch uh, Twitch Prime sub. Um. Because that, that would be... I would use that in so many streams. You heard about the music band hammer? Yes. There is a reason why I only use OC Remix uh, songs on my stream. Um, and realistically, like, it didn't... It's not even from the live streams, right? Because nobody cares about the live streams. I don't know why, but they don't. Um... What it was about is they already had somebody come after them for what goes on in live streams and they, they fixed it as best they could um, and in VODs, right? So what they're really worried about is the VOD, that somebody could then go to your VOD 
and never have to buy or download the music, right? Live music is advertisement, but music that stays around is usurping the market, right? So that's what they were really concerned with. They partnered with Amazon to use some technology that allows them to basically um, ignore... What? No, no. They partnered with Amazon to add some technology that allowed them to mute automatically VODs. This is London Information x ray where certain sounds were, were ma matched, right? Temperature two zero, two point one five. Hold on. Line two nine zero at one three. Altimeter two nine eight nine. Advise you have information X-ray. End of information X-ray. One three. This is London information. Hold on one second. I have to go where do I later? Now I'm landing. go down to 3,000, like, immediately. Is that when? Nope, it doesn't want to let me. Fine. On just one minute, I need to get through my procedures here. Elevation, auto, make two arrivals complete, performance approach complete, top of set winds, can't get them. I've seen altitude, set and push, already done, speed break, half as required, not necessary, altimeter, set, Q and H. What was that? Performance, approach, 2 9 or 8 9 or... Okay, so, uh, no, it wasn't them loading up their videos elsewhere. The, the issue was with clips. That's the new thing, is, is with clips. They didn't incorporate the same technology into clips. Uh, clips and highlights. So people can clip and highlight portions of a video where they're playing certain music, and then those play just fine. And so Rio was getting pissed off about that, and, and yeah, the artists do deserve to get their paid for what they're doing. Uh, and they just decided to say, basically, they're not. So they're not. They're still not going after the live streams, because again, the live streams are the bread and butter. The, the issue is the clips, and that's why it's recommended for a streamer not just. Just, just straight up, not ever use um, any copyrighted work in their uh, in their stream because if, for instance, I were to go into your stream while you're playing a copyrighted song and clip it, well, that song doesn't get muted on that clip. So then they can go after you. They can go after Twitch for having that clip because it's a video on demand. And that means that people can bypass the need to actually purchase the music. So they go after Twitch, then Twitch bans you to say, hey, look, Big Daddy Rhea, we're doing all we can. So we banned the user. It's all we can do. Which is dumb because it's still fucking Twitch trying to solve the problem from the wrong end, right? What they need to do is just incorporate the same technology into clips that they already have in VODs. Clips and highlights need to have the same technology that VODs do. In that case, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. However, comma, I would say it is always good practice to make sure that you have licenses before you use copyrighted content. End of statement. And if you've done that, it is no more of a threat than I'm running right now by playing, you know, OC Remix stuff. It's not that big a deal. You just have to be careful and make sure that you're not using any copyrighted content. 
Yeah, I've been using copyright-free background music and listening to my own thing in headphones. Yeah, exactly. And and here's the thing. The be the beautiful thing for me, I love OC Remix. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm going to go real quick over here and I'm going to look at the terminal. Okay, so we're going to want to probably vacate on Delta. If at all possible. I, I'm not sure it's going to be possible, but if it is possible, we're going to go Delta Golf. The terminal. Okay. Uh, landing lights. Coming on. I also want to make sure passengers are in their seats. I agree they should just use the same tech in the clips. Exactly. That solves the entire problem. But instead, they're trying to cheapskate and blame us and ban us for no reason. Um, now again, I don't really think it's no reason. I think that artists have a right to expect to get paid. If you use their copyrighted content, there are some artists, there are lots of artists who provide their, their work free of charge. And there's plenty of that. You can't argue and complain that it's impossible to make a decent stream without it. Um, but that's just my take on it. Like, I think that it's people making excuses if they're using copyrighted content. I know you want to listen to your own stuff. I know that you want to sing along. But you've got to respect everyone's rights if you want them to respect yours. If you want to be able to make money streaming, then you have to give money to the people whose assets you use. Whether that's yourself. Sometimes that's yourself. If you make your own content, by all means, use all of it on your stream. And then you're just paying yourself, and it doesn't matter, right? But, man, artists work way too hard for people to go and just take their content like that. It's really, it's really disheartening. And as a matter of fact... There was a streamer, and I'm not going to call him out by name because I feel like that's I feel like that's an issue. I, I, it's the exact reason why I'm pissed off with this streamer. Um, so I'm not going to say a name, but I was watching a stream last week, and this guy contacted somebody on Facebook who had just gotten out of design school and asked him to do Twitch emotes. Now, Nightland, you know what doing Twitch emotes entails, how much work it is, how difficult it is to get things to read at that size. Like, you know it is not a simple thing. If it was a simple thing, all streamers would just do it themselves. Now this guy went to a guy on Facebook and asked him to do it and said, if you do this for me, then, you know, I'll throw you into my Twitch panels and I'll, I'll pimp your work in my Discord and I'll try and get some of my friends to go with you as well. Like, he, 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 for reals, was asking for exposure, for work done for exposure. And I, I about lost my shit. I was like, dude, you, you realize that artists get asked for, to do shit for free for exposure all the time. My dude, you are sitting here with like seven viewers on a Friday. Like, I just want to make that clear. You've got like seven, seven to nine viewers, and I've never seen more than 12. You don't have enough people to be able to do something for promotion. Yeah, and, and, and then when he didn't answer, the, the guy didn't answer him back, so he got an attitude and was, you know, getting demanding with him, like, why aren't you answering me? Uh, you know, this is a business thing, and, 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 the, guy, and the guy came back with just... Fuck yourself. And I remember, I'll never forget, I was in the stream and I said, you know, wow. And he goes, yeah, I know, right? That was so rude of him. I was like, no, actually, I'm surprised he was that kind to you. I would have told you to fuck off and die. Like, no, you, you're, you're asking him to do what he does for free. Like, you understand, people who have finished design school are the people that Disney is hiring. And I need to pay attention to my landing here. Otherwise, I'm a crash. Okay, so landing systems are on. 
Uh, ND is on constraints. Approach. FCU speed is managed dashed. Uh, 230 knots. Speed checked. Flaps 1. FCU approach when the ILS is tuned. We may not get an ILS today. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to switch that into lateral mode. Because I think we need 22, 2300. Yeah, I, I, I did. I That pisses me off. Yeah, yeah. If somebody with a big following were to go for it, then yeah, you do what you do, right? Okay, we're under. That's fine. Okay, under 200 knots. Speed checked. Flaps 2. Under 185, speed check, flaps 3. Go ahead and drop our landing gear. Auto brake medium, because I'm not sure how long this runway is, and I think we're very close to its maximum length. Alright, speed check, flaps 3, or flaps full, pardon me. Taxi mode. Alright, there is no... Alright, we have a tailwind. This is not ideal. Well, yeah, Disney isn't hiring now, but, you know, it's the kind of person that Disney does hire. Alright, so I'm going to try and land with this 13-knot tailwind. It's within tolerance. I can go up to 15. If I see a gust, I am immediately going around. Ground spoilers armed. Auto brake set. Flaps three. Flaps full. Auto throttle. Nose wheel light. Runway turn off. Landing lights. Call purser. Ecam. No blue. All right, we are high. I'm gonna go ahead and take control now. It's going to be a very stressful landing, and I apologize for not being able to communicate during this time. But I'm going to try and not wreck us, because this definitely does not have uh, ILS. Come on, don't go for red. Do not go for red. Okay, the wind seems to be leveling out a little bit. Only 11 knots and it's a quartering tailwind now.
go. There's that butter I've been looking for. All right, 80 knots. Reverser stowed. All right, I think we were going right. Probably did that wrong. Yep, I was supposed to go the other way. That's all right, we'll just taxi around. We'll just taxi around. No big deal. Let's turn off our runway turnoffs and our landing lights. Disarm our speed brake. Wheels are very, very hot. Let's go ahead and turn that fan on. Ground spoilers disarmed, engine mode normal, flaps retracted, APU master on. I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. Well, I'll go ahead and turn the master on. Just won't turn the actual APU on for a bit. I probably could have gotten away with brakes low. All right, so we're gonna attack. We're gonna we're gonna taxi on the runway because there is no place for me to turn around here. But what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna go back taxi and turn around. There's a man on the wing. Is there? Is there a man on the wing? I don't think there's a man on the wing. Nice to meet you, Steampunk Dan. Thank you so much for dropping by. Ottawa, Toronto, London, Ontario. Yes, London, Ontario. We are in London, Ontario right now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a very, very small airport. Um, and it's way, way too close to Toronto to really get much in the way of uh, business. Get this thing turning. Actually, no, this is, this is smaller than Billy Bishop. This is much smaller than Billy Bishop. Actually, fun fact, Billy Bishop is included in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020's default sceneries. All right, so we're gonna turn around, we're gonna taxi back to the, uh, back to the terminal, because I exited the runway the wrong way. Because I was too busy holy fucking about my landing rate, which was, I think, like, minus 112 per minute. Whoa, that, that weather change. I think 124. Yeah, it was pretty low. It was it was it was in the butter region, and I think that's the first butter I have gotten on stream. I've gotten plenty of butters. Uh, I've gotten probably six or seven of them so far. That's the first one I've gotten on stream, and it was without ILS. Oddly enough, I. I I think I somehow tend to do better without ILS. Half of my landings on Friday and Saturday had no ILS and I landed just fine. Then here I landed my first time into a headwind. Everything's good. I landed, what, minus 300, 112?
Now, normally I would be announcing myself as I approach this runway and I would definitely stop to cross it. However, this is a simulator. I'm not in any online format and I don't have any standard planes, AI planes. I'm just gonna cross it and not worry about it. Now, I have an important question for all of you. Very important question. And that question is, we do a third sector. And if we are gonna do a third sector, where are we gonna go? Yeah, that is definitely how you would lose a pilot's license. Um, but since there's no ATC to ask permission, and there's no airplanes for me to head check to see, I'm not going to worry about it here. Um, I'm an armchair pilot, and I'm perfectly fine being an armchair pilot for the moment. Uh, definitely once, once we get to the point where PauseCon has ATC, because I am a part of that beta, once we get to the point where PauseCon has ATC, I will definitely be trying to follow all of those procedures as close to the real world as I can. Um, but PauseCon's not at the point of having ATC yet, and without ATC, I don't see a lot of point to doing so. Go ahead and come in here. Slow it down a little bit. Down some more. I think that should be good. No, sir. I said park break. Okay, let's take a look at the outside. That's about as good as we're going to get without... Uh, Without somebody to guide us in, any auto gate or anything. All right, so let's go through our parking checklist. Go ahead and start our APU. I probably should have done that a while ago, but I was too busy talking to you guys. All right, parking, park brake on, anti-ice off, APU bleed on as soon as it's available. So the question remains. 36 minutes, not bad. So the question remains, are we going to do a third sector? If so, where are we going to go? I would prefer something in the half an hour to an hour range if we're going to do anything. Uh, now, London does not go to a lot of places. Uh, let me grab it on flight connections. Now, real world... Oh, come on, don't use up on me. Yeah. The real world London only goes to Montreal, Punta Cana, uh, Puerto Plata, Cancun, and Calgary. But obviously, well, and back to Toronto. We could do that. You want to do that? Do you want to do back to Toronto? Go ahead and turn on APU bleed, and we can turn off engine one and two. When we turn offs are already off, turn off our taxi lights. Lights off, nose wheel lights off, beacon off, uh, seat belts can go off, fuel pumps off, transponder to standby. Now if you guys don't want to do another sector, that's fine. Peterborough, okay, Peterborough from here is is it? 
What is this? And that's just yeah there's there's no there's no flights that go that route um I don't think I could do that Okay, um, actually, something is coming up, and I'm going to have to jump off and deal with that. So, I appreciate you guys being here. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. Thank you guys so much, and hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow for Trials of Mana. Uh, have a wonderful evening, everybody, and let's actually, if I figure out how to go ahead and raid Nightly. Let's make sure she's alive. Go ahead and raid Nightland. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>